During a job interview for a spring developer position, you may encounter questions related to the spring bean life cycle. These questions can range from easy to hard, and they require a deep understanding of the spring framework. In this video, we'll cover five such questions, and we'll provide answers to each of them. Let's go. Our first question deals with what the spring bean life cycle is and why it is important. The spring bean life cycle is a sequence of steps that a bean goes through from initialization to destruction. It includes various phases, such as instantiating, initializing, populating, and destroying the bean. So why is the spring bean life cycle important? Well, by understanding the different phases of the spring bean life cycle, developers can control the life cycle of their beans and perform necessary operations during each phase. For example, they can initialize resources such as database connections during the initialization phase and release those resources during the destruction phase. This helps to ensure that resources are used efficiently and effectively. Our next question deals with the difference between bean instantiation and bean initialization. Bean instantiation refers to the process of creating a new instance of a bean by the spring container. This involves calling the bean's constructor and allocating memory for the bean. The container creates the bean instance based on the bean definition in the spring configuration file, which can be defined in XML, Java annotations, or Java code. The process of instantiation typically involves invoking a constructor, but in some cases, it may involve other mechanisms such as factory methods or prototype beans. Bean initialization, on the other hand, is the process of configuring a bean, which includes setting its properties, injecting dependencies, and performing any other necessary setup tasks. This process occurs after the bean has been created by the container. During initialization, the container sets the properties of the bean using either setter methods or constructor arguments, and also injects any dependencies that the bean requires. Developers can also perform additional configuration tasks during the initialization phase, such as registering event listeners or configuring third-party libraries. The main difference between bean instantiation and bean initialization is that instantiation is the creation of a new instance of a bean, while initialization is the process of configuring the bean after it has been created. In other words, Instantiation is a part of the initialization process, but not the entire process. The container instantiates the bean first and then initializes it by setting its properties and injecting its dependencies. The distinction between these two processes is important for developers to understand, as it helps them to determine when certain tasks should be performed in the bean lifecycle and also helps them to debug problems related to bean configuration and initialization. Our next question deals with the order of bean initialization in Spring. One way to control the order of bean initialization in Spring is to visualize the relationships between different beans and their dependencies. This is typically done using a dependency graph, which shows which beans depend on which other beans and in what order they should be initialized. A dependency graph can be useful for identifying circular dependencies and other complex dependency relationships that may affect the order of initialization. Another way to control the order of bean initialization in Spring is to use the depends on attribute in the bean configuration file. This attribute allows developers to specify dependencies between beans and therefore control the order in which they are initialized. For example, if bean A depends on bean B, the developer can specify that bean A depends on bean B in the bean definition XML file. This ensures that bean B is initialized before bean A, and that any required setup tasks are completed before bean A is used. The depends on annotation is another way to control the order of bean initialization in Spring. This annotation allows developers to declare dependencies at the class level and specify which beans must be initialized first before the current bean can be initialized. For example, if bean A depends on bean B, the developer can annotate bean A with depends on B to indicate that bean B must be initialized first. This ensures that the dependency is resolved correctly and that any required setup tasks are completed before bean A is used. Overall, there are several ways to control the order of bean initialization in Spring. Developers can use dependency graphs, 
depends on attributes, and depends on annotations to specify dependencies between beans and ensure that they are initialized in the correct order. By understanding these concepts, developers can create well-structured Spring applications that are easy to understand and maintain. Our next question deals with circular dependencies in Spring. When Spring encounters a circular dependency during bean initialization, it uses lazy initialization to resolve the dependency. This means that Spring will create a proxy object for one of the beans and inject it into the other bean. The actual bean will only be created when it is needed. For example, if bean A depends on bean B and bean B depends on bean A, Spring will create a proxy object for bean A and inject it into bean B. The actual instance of bean A will only be created when it is needed and not during the initialization phase. While Spring can handle circular dependencies using lazy initialization, there are several potential pitfalls to be aware of. One pitfall is that circular dependencies can lead to performance issues, such as stack overflows or excessive memory usage. This is because each bean needs to be initialized before it can be used, and if the initialization process involves a circular reference, it can result in an infinite loop of bean creation and destruction. Another potential pitfall of using circular dependencies is that they can make code more difficult to understand and maintain. This is because the dependency relationships between beans become more complex and it can be difficult to follow the flow of control between beans. This can make it harder to identify and fix bugs and also make it harder for other developers to understand and work with the code. To avoid circular dependencies and their potential pitfalls, it is important to follow good design principles when developing Spring applications. One such principle is the dependency inversion principle, DIP, which states that high-level modules should not depend on low-level modules, but rather both should depend on abstractions. Another principle is the single responsibility principle, SRP, which states that each class should have only one responsibility. Following these principles helps to ensure that classes have clear responsibilities and dependencies are kept to a minimum. Developers can also use techniques such as constructor injection or interface-based programming to reduce the likelihood of circular dependencies. For example, constructor injection can be used to break the circular dependency by injecting the dependent bean through the constructor. Interface-based programming can also help to reduce the complexity of dependency relationships by allowing beans to depend on interfaces rather than concrete implementations. Overall, by understanding the potential pitfalls of circular dependencies and following good design principles, developers can create well-structured and maintainable Spring applications. Our next question deals with the bean post processor in Spring. The Bean Post Processor interface is a Spring Framework interface that provides callback methods that allow developers to customize the initialization and destruction phases of a bean. This interface provides hooks into the Spring Bean lifecycle, allowing developers to perform additional processing on a bean after its properties have been set by the container, but before the bean is actually used. The Bean Post Processor interface can be used to customize the behavior of a bean during initialization and destruction phases. For example, developers can use it to add additional behavior to a bean, such as logging or security checks, or to modify the behavior of a bean based on the context in which it is being used. The Bean Post Processor interface can also be used to validate the configuration of a bean or to check for other errors that may prevent the bean from being initialized correctly. Developers can implement the bean post processor interface by creating a class that implements the post process before initialization and post process after initialization methods. These methods will be called by the Spring container during the initialization and destruction phases of the bean lifecycle, respectively. The post process before initialization method is called before the initialization phase of the bean and the post process after initialization method is called after the initialization phase of the bean. In the post process before initialization method, developers can perform additional setup tasks on the bean before it is fully initialized. For example, they can modify the properties of the bean or check for any required dependencies. In the post process after initialization method, 
developers can perform additional processing on the bean after it has been fully initialized. For example, they can add additional behavior to the bean or modify its behavior based on the context in which it is being used. Overall, the bean post processor interface provides a powerful mechanism for customizing the initialization and destruction phases of a bean in Spring. By implementing this interface, developers can perform additional processing on beans, validate their configuration, and modify their behavior to suit the needs of their application. So, did you know all the concepts for all five questions? If so, congratulations. If not, we hope you found this video useful. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more Spring Framework interview questions.